Hello, my name is Robert Nordland, and my company has been preparing capital plans since 1986. Simply speaking, capital plans reveal the true cost of building ownership. It doesn't matter if that facility is a commercial office, a house of worship, a private club, or a university. It's a fact of life that the very moment construction is completed, every major building component begins a slow, steady, and predictable process of physical deterioration. The operative word is predictable because capital planning is all about minimizing your surprises. But what exactly does that mean and why should you care? In the next eight minutes, I'll guide you through a big picture understanding of basic capital planning concepts. My goal is that you'll walk away with helpful principles and knowledge that will help make you a better steward of your facility and give you a strategy to avoid ever being surprised by a predictable major repair and replacement project. But who am I, and how can you trust that I know what I'm talking about? By training and background, I'm a licensed professional engineer. But what's important here is that I'm also an RS. That's short for Reserve Specialist, a designation earned in connection with reserve studies prepared for residential and resort communities like condominiums, co-ops, planned unit developments, homeowner associations, and timeshares. A reserve study is really just another word for a capital plan. Reserve studies are important in the world of association-governed communities where homeowners and home buyers rely on a volunteer board of directors to establish reserves in order to protect and maintain the value of the property. So whether it's called a reserve study or a capital plan, the report you receive will have these three key results. The initial creation of the component list requires a diligent physical site inspection while the remaining two results are based on calculations. The first key result is the component list, unique to each property. Because no two facilities are ever exactly the same, no two component lists will ever contain identical information. Although it's important to evaluate all the major physical components associated with a facility, Wisely selecting which building components to include on the component list for reserve funding relies on a four-part test. Is the component a client maintenance responsibility? Does the component have a limited useful life? Does the component have a predictable remaining useful life? And is the scope of the repair and replacement cost above a minimum threshold cost of significance? Each line item on the component list is documented in these ways. The basic description, an estimate of its useful life, an estimate of its remaining useful life, and an estimate of its current replacement cost. A typical component list would look like this, where the description and cost information defines the scope of the repair and replacement projects. In this example, you can see that sealing the asphalt at a cost of $8,000 is a significantly smaller scope of work than resurfacing the asphalt at a cost of $150,000. The useful life and remaining useful life information together is what determines the schedule of the repair and replacement projects. In this example, the asphalt will need to be both resurfaced and sealed in two years. But after that, asphalt sealing occurs on a five-year cycle while the larger resurfacing project is not expected for another 20 years. The second key result of every capital plan is a calculation of reserve fund strength. As I mentioned at the start of this presentation, it's a fact of life that buildings are always in a slow, steady, and predictable process of physical deterioration. If your organization is in the habit of setting aside reserve funds to offset this ongoing deterioration, great! but it's important to learn how well those reserve contributions have kept pace with ongoing deterioration. If your organization has no funds in reserves, it's important for you to face the truth about how far you've fallen behind. Reserve fund strength is a simple calculation that provides the answers to those questions. It's easy to figure out the numerator of this equation, it's the amount of reserve funds, if any, that have already been set aside. The denominator requires a calculation, establishing the fraction of deterioration that's occurred to each and every component, resulting in a current total dollar value of deterioration. 100% funded is ideal. That simply means the amount in your reserve fund is equal to the dollar value of deterioration. 
most organizations operate very successfully if they're above 70% funded. Organizations with a reserve fund strength less than 30% funded are those that operate on a reactive basis, not planning ahead effectively. Because of this, they regularly face significant financial challenges finding funds to make timely repair and replacements. Another way to look at reserve fund strength is that it predicts the risk of not having enough money when needed. The third and final key result of every capital plan is the funding plan itself. In creating the funding plan, we follow these four guiding principles. Collecting sufficient cash, collecting the cash at a stable contribution rate, fairly distributing reserve contributions over stakeholders and responsible parties, and establishing a financially responsible approach. Regardless of your funding objectives, there's a comfortable margin of reserve contributions that fall into the category of just right for each organization, offsetting your unique rate of ongoing deterioration. To be honest, most of our clients are behind pace. The consequence is that stable, scheduled contributions starting now may not accumulate fast enough to fully cover the cost of major repairs and replacement projects slated for the near future. So, it's likely that your funding plan may combine stable, scheduled contributions with an additional funding source like a loan, cash call, or fundraiser in order to prepare responsibly for a major expense in a few years. From our perspective, information is power. We believe that all the parties with a stake in the long-term financial health of the facility stand to benefit from knowing in advance what to expect and becoming financially prepared. No one likes avoidable surprises that involve having to come up with funds at the last minute. And everyone loves saving money by preventing costly deferred maintenance. Property management and maintenance staff in particular benefit when major repair and replacement projects are anticipated and scheduled at opportune times and that the funding is in place to execute the project when needed without the time-consuming and expensive repairs that are required when you're forced to make something last longer than its design life. And finally, occupants, regular users, and visitors enjoy the peace of mind that comes from a clean, safe, aesthetically pleasing, and well-maintained facility. Thank you for your time.